There's a saying among Swift UI developers that our views are a function of their state. But while it's only a handful of words, it might be quite meaningless to you at first. If you were playing a fighting game, you might have lost a few lives, scored some points, collected some treasure, and perhaps picked up some powerful weapons. In programming, we call these things state, the active collection of settings that describe the way your game is right now. When you quit the game, that state will get saved as a save game. And when you come back to the game later on, you can reload your game to get back to where you were. But while you're playing, that's all just called state. All the integers, strings, booleans, and more, all stored in RAM to describe what you're doing right now. When we say SwiftUI's views are a function of their state, we mean that the way your UI looks, the things people can see and what they can interact with, are determined by the state of your program. For example, they can't tap continue until they've entered the name in a text field. That in itself might sound obvious, but this is actually very different from the alternative that was used previously. Your UI was determined by a sequence of events. So, what the user sees right now is because they've been using your app for a while, have tapped various things, might have logged in or refreshed the data, and so on. The sequence of events approach means it's very hard to store the state of an app because the only way to get back the perfect state would be to play back the exact sequence of events the user performed. This is why so many apps just don't even try to save your state, even slightly. Your news app won't go back to the last article you were reading. Twitter won't remember if you were part way through typing a reply to somebody. And Photoshop forgets any undo state you had stacked up. Let's put this into practice with a button, which in SwiftUI can be made with a title string and action closure that gets run when the button's tapped. I'll say var tap count equals zero. And in the body, I'll say button, tap count, string interpolation, tap count, self.tap count plus equals one. That code looks reasonable enough. Create a button that says tap count plus the number of times the button's been tapped, then add one to tap count whenever the button's tapped. However, it won't build. That's not valid Swift code. You see, content view is a struct, which might be created as a constant. If you think back to when you learned about structs, that means it's immutable. We can't change its values freely. When creating struct methods that want to change properties, we need to add the mutating keyword. Mutating func do some work, for example. However, Swift does not let us make computed properties that are mutating, which means we can't write mutating var body some view. It just isn't allowed. This might seem like we're stuck at an impasse. We want to be able to change values while our program runs, but Swift won't let us because our views are structs. Fortunately, Swift gives us a special solution called a property wrapper, a special attribute we can place before our properties that effectively gives them superpowers. In the case of storing simple program state, like the number of times a button was tapped, we can use a property wrapper from SwiftUI called at state, like this at state var tap count equals zero. That small change is enough to make our program work, so we can now build it and try it out. At state allows us to work around the limitations of structs. We know we can't change our properties because structs are fixed, but at state allows that value to be stored separately by SwiftUI in a place that can be modified. Yes, it feels like a bit of a cheat, and you might wonder why we don't use classes instead. They can be modified freely. But trust me, it's worthwhile. As you progress, you'll learn that SwiftUI destroys and recreates your structs frequently. So keeping them small and simple is important for performance. Now, there are several ways of storing program state in SwiftUI, and you'll learn all of them. At state is specifically designed for simple properties that are stored in one view. As a result, Apple recommends we add private access control to those properties, like this, at state private var tap count equals zero. 